Today we're reacting to Demi Rawling, who we have not reacted to on this channel for a long time actually. And we've got a video titled here, 10 Colognes That Hypnotize Women, all caps. And you know with a beautiful woman like Demi and a title like that, a video like this will get 448k views, understandably. So I think these fragrances are the 10 that uh, Demi thinks are super attractive for us men. So I think it's worth us listening to her opinion and seeing if we agree or do not agree. Let's watch. Hi guys, so today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my recommendations for woman eater, woman killer fragrances for men. What do you guys think of that title? Women eater or women killer fragrances for men. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I have a mix of designer and niche fragrances in this list. I think I have a very well-rounded, balanced mix here. So let's just go ahead and get into the video. So this video was actually uploaded in January 2023. So yes, I think it's her experience in 2022. So it's still fairly recent, I'd say. And can we all appreciate that fantastic tan that Demi has going on? I think she lives mainly in Dubai nowadays. So I think she's uh, having the best life right now. I think she made an app with her boyfriend. Uh, Pierre and they made the app called Sniff, which you guys can go ahead and check out if you want to go ahead and support Demi. I'm going to start with a fragrance that I have been talking a lot about recently and that's because I genuinely love the way that this smells. I think it smells incredibly sexy and just very, um, I don't know, attractive on a man's skin. It is just divine. It is African leather from Memo Paris. This really grabs my attention personally and it is fantastic. For me, definitely the best from Memo. Um, top three for sure, and especially on a man. If you don't know how this smells, it is a slightly green spicy scent with a nice resinous ambery feeling. Uh, the fragrance is called African Leather, but personally, I don't feel any leather in this scent. Yeah, African Leather, I used to have a sample, I think, of this, and I really like this fragrance. I think she's right, it is one of the best from Memo. It smells like a very photorealistic spice cabinet. With a name like African Leather, you think, oh, maybe the leather will be the main uh, star of the show initially, but no, leather comes later. It's the spices you're gonna get hitting you in the face. It's not an easy fragrance, it's gonna be quite challenging, but I agree with her. I think it's fantastic perfume, and I think it is quite attractive, but you have to wear it, otherwise it will wear you. But I do think it is a fantastic scent for the bald man who is quite confident in himself to uh, at least try it out, see if you like it or not. We're switching up to something extremely common, very predictable, but for me, this was the year of Bleu de Chanel. <laughs> this was the year that I just fell in love all over again with Bleu de Chanel. The concentration that I have here is the Eau de Parfum. Now, if you're a guy who doesn't own this yet, get it. And if you're a guy who already has it in your collection, wear it. Yeah, I think we've talked about Bleu de Chanel so many times on this channel and it's been talked about so much now, but I do think Bleu de Chanel is a classic masterpiece. I think it's very attractive. It'll always be an attractive fragrance. So I think it's very safe. I think pretty much most collectors should have it, as she says. I would say if it's your first time buying Bleu de Chanel, get the Eau de Parfum that she's holding. If it's your second time buying Bleu de Chanel, upgrade to the Parfum. I think it's better. 32% of people who watch School of Scent are subscribed to us. If you guys want to see our channel grow, to really help us out, click subscribe. Let's get that number to 40%. Thank you. So next up, we have Tuxedo from Yves Saint Laurent. Now, you guys know that I love this fragrance. It is in my top five fragrances for men of all time. Out of all of the fragrances that I've smelled in the world on a man, Tuxedo is in my top five for sure. If you don't know how this smells, Oh my god, is it good. You get a little bit of an ambriness, a bit of patchouli, something green and fresh, and something sweet and comforting at the same time. Guys, this is a 10 out of 10 fragrance. So Tuxedo is a great scent. A lot of people give this a lot of hype. I don't really like it that much personally, but I think it's just my personal taste. I think objectively it is a great scent that I can see why Demi loves it so much. I think it's a great unisex scent in general. I don't think it has to be particularly masculine in particular. But I do think it's a fantastically blended spicy amber rose fragrance, like kind of like what she said. And I think the issue with uh, with Tuxedo for me is I don't like the DNA that much personally. I actually kind of prefer Ombre Nuit by Dior. Uh, I think those two fragrances kind of compete against each other. They kind of have a similar feel. They're not clones at all, but they kind of compete against each other. I prefer Ombre Nuit personally, but also I think Rocha's Mustache uh, Man Eau de Parfum 
recreated tuxedo so well that it kind of made it redundant for me. But that's just my opinion. That's quite controversial, I know. Let me know, do you guys think tuxedo is still worth buying in this day and age, or do you think people should just get a clone like Mustache EDP? Another one that I am just obsessed with and you guys need to get on it. And I think that a lot of you guys did check out this fragrance from my recommendation and a lot of you fell in love with it. It is Basso from Suspiro. Now, this fragrance is foolproof. I don't see how a guy could like hate this fragrance because it just smells so good. Basso, think of a niche version of Terre d'Hermes and that's what you're gonna get with Basso. It's smooth, it's woody, it's spicy and it's fresh. Interesting, a niche version of Terre de Mez. That sounds incredible. I love Terre de Mez, guys. If you guys don't know, it's one of my four life fragrances. I think it's one of the most attractive fragrances a man can wear as well, personally. And having a niche version sounds really interesting, especially with the fact that the Eau de Toilette has unfortunately been heavily reformulated. Let's look at the note breakdown of Basso. So it's got quite good ratings on Fragrantica. It's an all year round scent, apparently. Looking at the notes, yeah, it kind of does give off Terre de Mez vibes. Vetiver in there like Terre de Mez. Grapefruit, which is citrusy, like Terre de Mez as well. But lavender makes it quite ambery. So maybe it's a more slightly sweet take on Terre de Mez, who knows? But yeah, the performance looks like it's fantastic. Honestly, I've only tried one fragrance from Suspiro and that was Vibrato, and that was a phenomenal fragrance. So I would give that a 10 out of 10. So yeah, actually I would want to try this. I think Suspiro is a, a, a slept on brand. So have you guys tried out Basso? Let us know guys, it does a niche version of Terre de Mez sound appealing to you. Next up, we're going to a designer. It is Maison Martin Margiela Jazz Club. You guys know my love for this fragrance. I talk about it in almost every men's video. Um, so please take that as a sign for you to just go ahead and buy it because it's just incredible. Jazz Club is a boozy, smooth, woody tobacco fragrance. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It's woody, but not too woody. It's boozy but not too boozy. Are you seeing where I'm going with this? It's just perfectly balanced. Yeah, I think actually her review actually is fair enough. I would say it is a balanced, boozy, woody, spicy DNA. An incredibly sexy evening scent that although is marketed unisex, I would say actually leads more masculine. This is one of the best evening fragrances ever made. It's not a beast mode performer. It's around six hours, which stops it from being a 10 out of 10 in my uh, criteria but it's a nine out of 10. I think it's easily the best DNA in the entire Maison Margiela line. You definitely need to try it. I think it's number one in there. I agree with her, it's incredibly attractive. For the next fragrance, I'm gonna stick in the line of like Jazz Club, but they don't smell the same. I'm just kind of, anyways, let me show you. It is from Killian and it is Straight to Heaven. Now, this is not the extreme version. This is just the original Straight to Heaven. And I wanted to recommend it to you guys because usually I talk about Angel Share, which is fantastic. If you like Angel Share, if you've tried it, this one is totally approved by me. And also Intoxicated by Killian. If you guys watch my channel, you know how much I love that scent as well. Okay, I haven't tried Straight to Heaven, or maybe I have, I cannot remember. I've tried a lot of samples and, uh, you know, test strips of Killian in stores. Let's look at the note breakdown. Yeah, I can kind of see why she'd say, if you like Angel Share, you like this. It has the boozy aspect of the rum. It has the gourmand aspect with the dried fruits notes. It's woody, patchouli based, so it's probably a little bit darker, more woody. Uh, it seems like maybe a more serious version of something like Angel Share. Angel Share might be more playful. I'm just trying to guess off the note breakdown, guys. Obviously, I haven't tried it. I don't think I've tried it, I can't remember. But this sounds incredibly sexy. Now that Demi's recommended it, I'm gonna try it at some point and definitely confirm it in my mind as to what it is. Have you guys tried Straight to Heaven? the original by Killian. Tell us your uh, thoughts and experience with it in the comments below. Next up, I'm just gonna chuck it in here. Leighton from Parfum de Mali. Still to this day, it is one of the best fragrances for me, period. Um, that's why I'm putting it in this list. I know I have talked about this for so many years, you guys, and I'm sure that you're probably kind of sick of it and over it. I'm sorry, because this for me, is still one of the best fragrances ever created for a man. Yeah, Leighton again has been talked so much in the community. If you don't know about Leighton, it's sort of like a fresh powdery uh, apple pie scent with a rose and vanillic backbone in there. It smells masculine overall, spicy, warm, intoxicating, and attractive as well. I would say it's an attractive fragrance. Although I feel like Leighton is the best beginner entrance in 
uh, apart from the Marley brand, it's quite easy to love, but at the same time, it's still rich and decadent and makes it feel like it's worth the money. But then I would say, similar to Bleu de Chanel, if you know, if you buy Leighton and you finish your first bottle of it, go for Carlisle as your second bottle. That's the real upgrade right there. Okay guys, so next up we have Falcon Leather from Matière Premier. I just posted a video with Michelle from Curly Fragrance and this was one of her top rated fragrances. So if that's not a sign to check out this fragrance, I don't know what else I can do to help you guys to figure out that this is an incredible fragrance. Falcon Leather, not like the name suggests, it's not very leathery in my opinion, like it doesn't smell like straight up leather, thank god because I personally hate leather. This is a beautiful, slightly sweet, smoky, leathery-ish scent, but my gosh you guys, this is very addictive, very masculine. For me, this is totally a masculine scent. Okay, interesting. Uh, a leather fragrance in the name, but not in its smell. Let's look at the notes. Yeah, interesting. Uh, you might say that it's not much of a leather fragrance because it's not even listed as a note. It's, they've got saffron, labdanum, which is gonna give that sweetness. Uh, birch tar, which is probably gonna smell like a smoky woody note, as well as agarwoods, oud, and benzoin. So interesting, quite a... Um, Warm, sweet fragrance? Warm, sweet, smoky? It's one of those fragrances that's difficult to assess without smelling. Uh, based on the note breakdown, I really don't know much, but it seems like it's a cold weather evening scent, so it probably is quite ambery, quite sweet. Have you guys tried this? Mathieu Premier is getting a lot of hype online. I really need to check out their fragrances. Another one that's getting quite a bit of hype is Crystal Saffron, which I also need to check out. Okay, guys, so next up we have Guerlain, L'Homme Ideal Eau de Parfum. <sighs> guys, this fragrance is super addictive and very, very sexy. For me, this is a date fragrance. Let me repeat, wear this on a date and the girl is, or guy is gonna have a hard time staying away from you because this is edible. Yeah, Lomi the LDP is sexy. I do agree with that. It's not my style though. I didn't never actually went ahead and bought a full bottle. Actually, the entire Lomi the line in general, I've always liked them, but I never really felt I needed to buy them. I bought Lomi the Cologne just because it was cheap back in the day, but even that I gave away. Even though I really like it, it's strange. I, I like the, the idea, but they just don't match my my personality. I just don't uh, mesh well with them. But Lomi the LDP is a sexy cherry almond powdery sweet leather fragrance. I think it's quite sexy, unique, has interesting ideas, creative, I love that, it has great performance. I think it's a cold weather signature in general, also in the winter time, but it definitely does work on a date like Emmy is saying. In my opinion though, the most sexy and attractive Lomi Diel, the only one I still own a full bottle of, is Lomi Diel Extreme. I feel like it's better blended, it's more balanced, easier to wear. Not as good performance, around six hours, but I think it's definitely the sexier flanker in my opinion. What do you guys think? Controversial. Okay guys, and finally, my last recommendation for a woman killer, woman eater fragrance, is one that I don't own, sadly. It is Musk Gravageur from Frederic Mal. This fragrance is a masterpiece, and if you ask anyone in the fragrance industry, this is one fragrance, just like Bleu de Chanel, that I feel like a lot of people have a certain amount of respect for because it is just a masterpiece. If you don't know how it smells, Musk Ravageur is this very warm, ambery, musky, slightly sweet, spicy, woody fragrance and it is just to die for. I agree with her. I think Musk Ravageur, from what I experienced with Frederick Mal so far, it is my favorite fragrance from them. It is a masterpiece. It is a very good scent. If you like amber evening perfumery that as you said is balanced it's definitely cold weather so it's heavy but it's still balanced if you know what i mean if you smell it you'll, you'll appreciate that as you said it's a spicy a heavy cinnamon note in there but it's definitely overall an ambery scent that kind of has a medicinal effect to it it smells high quality it smells like something that's niche you don't get this in designer perfumery if you want a really attractive sexy unisex evening fragrance more for the cold weather fantastic performance you need to try it out. I don't think it's a blind buy, but I think most people will love this frame. So check it out. If you guys have tried it, let us know your thoughts in the comments as well. So that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video of uh, a few of my favorite recommendations for woman eater perfumes. Thank you so much, Demi. That was a fantastic video. I think there was some really interesting choices in there, a mixture of uh, designer and niche, which I think is really cool. I pretty much agree with all that she said. I really want to try some of the stuff that she recommended, like Straight to Heaven and Basso, Basso Spira, and as well as Falcon Leather. That's what I like about Demi. She always puts you on to some new scents that you've not uh, tried before. What do you guys think? Have you uh, learned about new fragrances that you want to try out? 
uh, from this uh, video, from me reacting to this video. Of course, guys, I had to cut out a lot because the video itself, the original video is quite long and <laughs> adding my reactions was making this super long. So of course, guys, go watch the original video. I'm gonna leave linked in the description down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our previous reaction video to Monica and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.